Thank you, Chairman, uh, for the session. Uh, I, I think I have uh, my colleagues who have filled in exactly and uh, in quite a, uh, quite a lot of detail as to what the policies of the Andhra Pradesh has been. I would just uh, uh, conclude uh, and make an observation. I think Andhra Pradesh uh, now, uh, Andhra Pradesh government and APRC have stolen the mantle of uh, Maharashtra and MERC to be the uh, uh, to be the champions for regulatory and progressiveness, and I'm sure that uh, uh, this will propagate to be the California of India. I mean, it is the policies are so progressive. Uh, having said that, I would like to just throw the, some some particular uh, points in uh, in in perspective um, today um, on an all India basis. Uh, uh, and on an annual basis, uh, we have renewable energy as a mix of the grid somewhere around 5 and 6 uh, percent. And when I say uh, renewable energy mix, renewable energy can be looked into two categories, firm and non-firm. So the non-firm renewable energy are wind and solar PV. And I think we need to be very sure that when we are talking about uh, solar PV, we don't use it as a generic term solar because solar has multiple definitions as one of the colleagues also mentioned here as solar thermal uh, for low temperature, but you also have solar thermal power generation also. So when you're talking about PV, we should specifically say solar PV. The solar PV and wind are both variable and this presently constitute on an all India basis on an annual basis 5 to 6%. Now that doesn't, that uh, even at these levels today, uh, in various pockets, we find the variable uh, renewable energy generation reaching grid penetration levels in excess of 20%. Tamil Nadu is a standing example for a couple of years, but you also have in Rajasthan, you have pockets in, you have in Kutch, you have pockets in MP, you have pockets in Maharashtra. Now, uh, go forward, speed forward to year 2022. We are supposed to have 160 gigawatts of variable generation. At that year 2022, we would be somewhere around 14 to 16 percent of grid penetration by renewable energy. You can imagine the havoc it might cause. So what we need to be careful is to understand what renewable energy can do and make sure that renewable energy does not become the headache. It is actually a boon. Why is it a boon? Number one, you secure your, all your costs. What is renewable energy? You buy your fuel for the lifetime right up front. You don't have any fuel linkages kind of uh, issues. You have energy security. You work towards the climate change objectives. But for this renewable energy integration into the grid, as one of the, one of the former CEA uh, directors mentioned rightly, we need to be capturing the variability. Now, variability in wind and solar PV is not a big issue. Variability in the grid is already there. We need to be knowing how the current grid operators can be managing and this can only be captured by making the grid more flexible. Now, how could we make the grid more flexible? The earlier morning sessions you had uh, also talked about various power sources. Now the grid can be made, made flexible in the following four conditions. We need to have balancing power. We need to have a power evacuation that is seamless and connected. You need to have a very dynamic and, uh, and fluid liquid power market and you need to have grid ancillary services. Now unless these things are there, you cannot be having a, a flexible grid. Now let's uh, let's uh, change geographies and look at other countries, how they are doing. Let's look at California. California is a state which has got a lot of wind. It has been the champion. How, that's how the wind uh, took off. It has a lot of solar and it has all these four conditions. It has a balancing power. It has gas. Uh, it has uh, well-connected power systems. It has a very dynamic uh, power system, uh, power market, and it has a grid sensory market. In spite of that, what the Californian independent system operators have concluded after around seven to eight years of research is that if you are going to be adding more and more of renewable energy, 
you need to be looking at how the system can be made even more flexible and energy storage is one of the reasons i'll just take an example what they call it as a typically call a duck curve so the california independent system operators looked into the to the grid and started to understand how the load will behave in various time zones and renewable energy capacities and conventional capacities that is going to be coming into futures they projected up to 2020 what they found is when this solar is going to be adding up far more now and they anticipate that what happens is the solar starts generating only after the morning peak is over and it stops before the evening peak picks up so what happens is there is a morning peak which is like the tail of the duck and then as the day progresses your solar generation increases so your net load keeps decreasing and that's like the bottom of your duck uh, stomach and then after the sun sets the evening peak comes in and it is like the head of the duck so when sony saab the head of posoko made the presentation on the 22nd of september uh, of uh, of uh, march in delhi at the green summit and he made the same uh, same things i said the situation in india could be even more worse for india it might not be a duck curve it might be a giraffe curve and why is that a problem so the ramp up the number of megawatts per minute that we have to do is going to be immense the one of the questions that was going through leads to that if you look at the situation on say for example i'll draw your attention to another situation of march 22nd when the this year when there was a solar eclipse in europe the solar eclipse was a very heavy one the obscurity level was nearly 89 percent in belgium now what happened to the european network system operators what they have were planning for it for last two years Europe has 89 gigawatts of solar PV installed and for the period from morning 8.30 till 11.30 your obscurity level increases so you would have the solar generation dropping off. What that means is the all the conventional power plants need to pick up that much and then after two hours in less than that time it starts picking up again so the conventional power plants have to back down. So it's a heavy back up and heavy back down is a big issue for system operators, for the generators, especially when we don't have liquid power markets, spot markets, uh, short gates, uh, closing things. So it is a very big issue. Can the situation in India improve? I don't think in the time frame of well, short to medium term, there would be a possibility that these four uh, sufficient conditions will be there. That is, we have enough balancing power, we have uh, seamless power evacuation, we have a, a, a well-to-do uh, power market dynamic and we have grid ancillary services. Grid ancillary services is uh, p generators uh, uh, picking up generation or dropping off generations or, or load guys uh, reducing their loads or increasing the load depending upon the grid characteristics for which they are paid for maintaining grid frequency or voltage in particular uh, time frame. CERC is coming to, and coming up with a regulation, but even after it comes, it will take a time for it to be dynamic. Now let's look at the situation in Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh plans to have 5 gigawatts of solar PV, 4 gigawatts of wind by year 2019. Looking at the what is the conventional capacity that is going to happen and what the solar and wind is going to happen. In uh, so we did the simulation at ILFS to understand the whole thing. So by so in a scenario of 2019 in January. In the morning, if all the 5 gigawatts is there of solar and wind is there, you would need 3 gigawatts of ramp down in the morning from uh, 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So the question that you're asked, the, the, the Tangenko is here. So in 3 hours in January, you would need to have a ramp down of conventional because the solar picks up. And in the, after, in the evening, in January, you will need to have the 3 hours of uh, ramp up by the conventional in two hours, in uh, the, oh, sorry, this is the situation in August. In January, it increases to 3.3. Now, this is not a full-fledged energy modeling, but this is just an estimate, and it's in the same ballpark. Now, what I'm trying to say is just three gigawatt order ramp up and ramp down, just on the fact of renewables coming there, would be a tremendous, tremendous stress for the system. Now. One of the ways for uh, uh, that India as such could take uh, 
uh, advantage of this particular situation is the new distributed energy storage technologies that is came, coming up. Now this is um, currently uh, as is being advocated and being in installed by regulations and things sort in California, Texas, New York, Germany, Japan in a tremendous way. All the estimates whether it's McKinsey or IHS and other things conclude that in the next three years there's going to be 60 percent cost reduction. So we as part of the Electricity Act 2014 amendments, we need to have uh, we need to have uh, provisions in the Act that would make it away, uh, enable regulators to have uh, regulators to have regulations specific to that. So the Act needs to have that. If the Act does not have, regulators could not be able to act. And I see IPPA in their draft things as a booklet that is there. They have in included that uh, as a particular part. Now. Energy storage is a, is a broad term. Energy storage could be done through pump storage or a gas uh, as the most of the Im, uh, important. 99% of the global energy storage is pump storage. Now, as we heard in the morning, uh, the 6,000 or 14,000 megawatt, 6,000 specifics for AP, uh, even if it comes online, it is going to be meeting to the base load. So we will, even if all the 14,000 of gas comes in, we would still be meeting the base load. So we would not have any spinning reserves, balance reserves for the part of it. Now, as regards the technologies that you are looking at in renewable energy, I think there is a very nice focus, that balance focus that uh, Andhra Pradesh government has given. Having said that, one should be sure about the following differences. Um, solar is a, is a special one. You could apply solar photovoltaics anywhere. Second part, is that wind is very site specific. You could put it only where wind is blowing. It's like buying a refrigerator, but the cooling will depend upon which place in your house you place it. So it's very site specific. But having said that, if you have a site which is windy and solar, you should understand that per footprint of land that wind, uh, that uh, wind or solar takes in, wind generates nearly six and a half more kilowatt hours than solar. That's number one. Number two, Wind is by far the least water consuming or needing energy technologies that the mankind has known till now. Solar needs water for your cleaning of the whole thing. So when we are thinking about solar in a large way, while it is widely applicable, I think due consideration for the water and this can't be any water. It has to be specific quality water because you will be putting it on the solar. I think my friends from First Solar are there, they can uh, qualify this statement. The last part that I would like to say is that when we are talking about wind solar, and I think again, Andhra Pradesh government has been at the forefront at looking at what of, a, of coming out with the wind solar concept. But we got to be very careful as to what is the definition of a wind solar hybrid. To a wind farm and a solar next to each other, connecting to a pooling substation, does that give any benefit? We need to be understanding what the true principles of a wind solar hybrid should be and why we should be promoting that. Wind solar hybrid uh, combinations could be broadly in three categories. One, at the turbine level, turbine controller level, you integrate the solar. We have not seen any project worldwide that to happen, but it's a possibility and India could take a leap. That's one. That's within the wind farm itself. So within the wind turbines, which needs to be spaced out separate to each other, you could have solar and then it integrates into the controller. Second could be that the integration is not at the wind turbine controller, but the VCB yard, vacuum circuit breaker yard place, and you have integration also within the wind farm layout. The third one is that wind and solar are next to each other, but they are connected such that the power evacuation at the point till the point that it is going into the pooling substation is the same. All these three categories could be considered as wind solar hybrid projects. However, if you have to be looking at wind and solar as separate projects, separate adjacent to each other, it doesn't deem it, there, there needs to be no optimization of either land or from the utilities point to reduce the volatility of the generation that is going to come. So for example, if you have wind uh, alone, you would have the uh, over a year uh, hourly generation, you have a particular volatility that can be measured by a standard deviation. Similarly with solar, but if you combine the wind and solar in the 
particular ratio depending upon the site resources a particular ratio of wind and solar will reduce the overall volatility which is what the utilities utilities should be looking at it in trying to address the variability part of it now to take it further to convert uh, all the renewable energy plants into a peaking power plants so to speak you need to be looking at energy storage now in, on, on on fact of energy storage another uh, cheap uh, cheap in, uh, uh, trivial information we are all in india very proud that we have the largest global largest mobile uh, handset market and that is a fact but also is a fact that every rechargeable battery in that in laptops in in, in cameras is all imported the total value of imported uh, re uh, rechargeable batteries last financial year was 4400 crores compounding at 12% the technology used for this and for uh, other, uh, other technologies is the same this provides an excellent opportunity to leap forward and to be really imbibing renewable energy in a growth market i do not see a challenge for andhra pradesh to be like california or like germany to uh, to anticipate that by year 2030 we are going to have 50% or 100% of all our energy needs to be met by by renewable energy it can be done but there needs to be a backing up with all the things so whether it is solar then you need to have manufacturing you cannot achieve costs to the levels that the customers can buy no amount of bundling or other financial jaggery can really sustainably manage these things in a large way you need to have manufacturing of solar andhra pradesh has lands very progressive uh, policies manufacturing should be taken up second if you have to be looking at energy storage you should be looking at manufacturing energy storage also that clubs very well with the national electric vehicle mission which has which is a national mission to have 6 to 7 uh, million electric vehicles with rechargeable batteries so on this note i would like to leave saying that